G'day, and welcome to part two on my Fraps tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about encoding and also just some simple sound stuff. Now, the thing about Fraps is that part of its design to create as a lossless process, it actually doesn't encode any of the files on the fly because encoding requires a CPU expenditure while just dumping the raw file to the hard drive, you're pretty much only getting slowed down by the capturing process. There's no encoding process, but the result of this is that the files are quite large. This bunch of files represents a single recording session of about 40 minutes. And as you can see, every single file is about four gigabytes each. Now, if we just uh, click on one, you can see I've recorded a game called Aquaria, which is a kind of sort of explorative uh, platformer. It's an indie game and it's uh, very, very good. Uh, I've been getting into this recently. But uh, as you can see, I've recorded a 1680 by 1050 resolution and uh, the files are all split into these sections. Oh, and they've got sound. If I just load that up, I'll just unclick the sound button. There were many strange ingredients to be found in the waters of Aquarium. By cooking them together with the verse, Still, I could Still, I'm not going to go into video editing at all. There's many uh, freeware or cheap solutions for video editing. Probably the most commonly used is Movie Maker, Microsoft Movie Maker for PC. But uh, I personally use for my videos an application called Adobe Premiere, which is a professional level software that I use for work. So it's a little expensive for just, you know, fooling around on YouTube. Still, there are ways that you can create your gameplay footage without doing any editing, especially if you're recording gaming sessions like, uh, you know, say first person shooters is very common or uh, a Warcraft raid or something like that. And I'll just show you how I do it with the app, these uh, free or freeware applications. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we've got all these files together and that is one session. Now, even though the files are split, there's no audio jumps between each file. So if you played all those files together, if you stuck them all together, it would create one seamless video. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So if you go, there's an application called Avid Mux, which is completely freeware, and it's very, very, very good. And this is it here. Now, as you can see, it's not a particularly complicated app. It's like a spiritual predecessor to Virtual Dub, if you've heard of that application, with more modern uh, features. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag the first file into this window. As you see, it loads it up fine, comes out a little big, so we're just going to go to View and set that to half size so it's more manageable in my screen. Now, all I need to do is click on the next file, drag it in, 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 and so on. Okay. Now, if we look down, you can see that the total length of the video is now 50 minutes. And it plays all the way through, and you have all the gameplay footage, and whatever live commentary you've done while watching the footage. Uh, playing the game, big pardon. So there's a few things we can do now. I tend to prefer to upload in 720p, but obviously 1680 1050 is much larger than that. So the first thing we're going to do is decide what codec to use. Now the codec I use, if you go to video, just click the down arrow, and I scroll down to X264. And then in the filters option, we click this and we have a little option called resize. So I just click on that, 
and I just changed this to 1280 by 720 which is the resolution for 1280p and that filter is now active and there's a number of other fancy filters in here you've got crops and fades and I really don't use much of these the one I do often use is colors and contrast I don't particularly need it for this video but some videos, especially if you're doing a 3D game, the gamma from the game isn't recorded inside Fraps, which means that you might need to add the contrast filter and you, in the filter you can adjust the brightness or the contrast and just get the image looking a little better. Now I have noticed that YouTube seemingly, I guess in the way that they re-encode the file, uh, sometimes the videos in YouTube come a little bit darker so it's a good idea just to bump up the brightness just a little bit if your videos are turning up a little dark we're not going to bother doing it for this one another thing uh, that sometimes happens if you go back into transform is you might need to use vertical flip now I don't need to use it in my video that I'm showing you now but sometimes and I'm not quite sure why if you bring the file into Avid Max it's uh, upside down so you just click on vertical flip and everything's fine okay now I'm just going to hit configure on the video and what I like to do is click on this little down arrow and just go average bitrate and I just put in 2500 now, yes, that is very small for 720p if you're talking about films, but we're talking about streaming media over YouTube, and YouTube will re-encode to a lower bitrate than that is. Now, the thing is, if you, if you upload it at this bitrate, it's just going to have a little bit of better quality, so the, de de uh, the degradation during the conversion process at YouTube won't be so affecting your video. So that's what I do, I go to 2500 and I just click OK. OK, doing a tutorial is a little more complicated than I thought and I've run out of time again and the final tutorial will be in part 3 and it won't be very long. Uh, see you then.